Hey everyone, um, so a lot of people in the time that I've been on YouTube have asked me to do an animation tutorial. I didn't before because the way I animated was very stupid. <laughs> I used to use fire alpaca and just draw, draw out frames individually and then just edit it in iMovie and it was a mess. But since then, I've graduated to Clip Studio Paint EX, which is a wonderful program, and I recommend that you get it because the only reason I have this and not an Adobe program is because I can't afford an Adobe program because the way they do things is the payment is monthly, so you have to pay every month like $25, and I can't afford that. And for Clip Studio, you pay once and you're done. You get a license and you have it forever, and I think that's very, very good and wise and efficient. It was $90 when I bought it, and I've been told that it goes on sale quite frequently. So if you're in the market for an animation program or you want to like get started with animating, I recommend this studio. So I'm not going to be doing a new animation for you guys here. Like I'm not going to like draw a ball bouncing or something that you see in a lot of tutorials. I just thought I would show you... Um, the logistics of what I'm working on right now and what goes into it, and then you can apply that information to your own life. Um, so I'm just gonna... Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is show you what a new scene looks like and how I set it up and everything, so let's get started. So the first thing you do is go File, New, obviously, and then you have these five little icons up here. This one's for like illustration, this is for if you want to make a manga or a comic, this one is for a fanzine. I actually haven't used that before. And then this one is for animation. So this is the one you want. Um, this is where you would name it. You can name it anything you want. The width and height is up to you. You can make it anything you want. You can make it bigger or smaller with these little drop arrows. Um, the size I use is 23 by uh, 1250 pixels. And the resolution is 300 that I use. Um, if you'll notice, you'll see this little blue box around the white box. That's the camera view. So anything you draw within the blue box will show up on screen. And if you ever want to change that, you can change it with these um, drop down things. So let me go back up. Yeah, you see how it changed? So the white area is your blank space, the things that won't show up on screen. And then the timeline name, I never really use. If you use it, it's just going to show up here. If you can see right there, it says story. That's because I never use it, so the default is story. Um, but you can name it whatever you want. It's just really to keep track of everything, but I don't really see where it's necessary. And the frame rate, I think, is self-explanatory. Um, I don't know why this is 30. I usually use 15. Have I been animating in 30 this whole time? Yikes. <laughs> Um, and then the rest of these numbers are pretty just standard. And then that's about everything. And then you'd hit OK and wow, bam. So let me turn off all of my layers right now. So if you were to just open up a brand new uh, thing, you would get just this, just a white blank canvas. Um, and this is called the paper level. This will automatically be white every time you open a new document, but you can go up here to layer color. And personally, an advice we artists use <laughs> is to never work on a white canvas because it's very intimidating and you're less prone to catch mistakes you've made. So we, most artists recommend working on a dark background. So I usually make it light blue. That feels good on my eyes and and like a lot of people use gray when they work, but a lot of my Monica's clothes in this animation have gray in it, so it gets a little confusing for me. And by the way, this is the Doki Doki Disney animation that I've been working on. Um, so let's turn the layers back on. So, so let me explain this mess. This is your timeline. Um, everything is in like folders. So this is the paper folder. And then you would press this button right here to make a new folder. So that's a compilation of frames. And this button is an animation cell, which is a frame. And then this is the onion skin mode. You turn that on and off. I think everyone knows what onion skin is at this point. Uh, yeah, so you see 
that little action, that's the onion skin. It lets you see a frame forward and a frame behind so that you can get an accurate thing. One thing I will tell you is that you can't just copy and paste. Like if I wanted to copy this, then paste it in a new frame and then change it slightly, you can't do that. So that's a little annoying, but it is what it is. Um, but yeah, everything is in folders, which I like a lot. The only thing I don't like is that you can't color, um, you can't categorize your folders by color, uh, color coded, that's the word. Um, so it's a little, like seeing gray all over the place gets a little confusing, but it, you know, it is what it is. Um, so these are where I do, here, I'll show you what this is first, actually. Let me do that. So this is Monica saying a poem of me and you, and then she laughs, ha ha ha, and then she runs off, running out the door to be with her love. It's very cute. <laughs> um, so I started with this. So let me show you. I started rough one. Rough one is, or rather rough two. Rough two is Monica here, like her body. And then I turn that layer off and the rest of her is her mouth moving. So if I were to just play that, it would just be her mouth. Um, so it's very helpful to animate mouths and other, it's very helpful to animate the thing that's primarily moving or in motion on a separate folder, especially in Clip Studio, because you kind of have to. Um, but yeah, that's that. Um, and basically, all animation is, is just like understanding motion and making things believable as they move and repeating yourself over and over and over again. Actually, let me open up um, a finished um, thing from this because I think that will be more helpful. So one second. Also, you'll notice I have a lot of folders. It's extremely helpful to be organized while you do this because if you don't, you might get a little confused with everything. So always make sure that you're organized. Here we go. So I named this one Imagine because this is the line, or this is the point in the, uh, the video where she says, I imagine a future where I can be with you. <laughs> it's a little laggy when you play it back in Clip Studio, but this took me like a month to finish. It was so agonizing. So actually, yeah, let me show you. Um, okay, let's see. So let's turn off the clean window, the house color. Turn off clean. Turn off color. Turn off house color. And then down below is the roughs, you see? So rough Monica. So this is how she looked when I first roughed it out. You see how it's just like rough and sketchy and not clean at all? So that's how you always want to start. You don't want to start with the perfect clean lines because that makes pressure and you're prone to make more mistakes. So then once you're done with that, you go over it another time. So this is just adding details, but you're still being rough about it. It's not clean yet. You see? So this is just like outlining where things are gonna go. Okay, and then I called this hair flaps. I don't remember. I think this was like the little tendril of hair that she has. Yeah, you see that little flip? That was just mapping out where the hair is going to flip. And then hair fix, I had to fix like her little bangs up there and change them accordingly. And then, so months later, turn all these off and turn on the, the color, the other color. Or no, actually, actually, let me show you the clean lines. Because this is... Cleaning the lines is the hardest thing about animation. Because you... Especially for this, I'm trying to give it like a classic Disney animation feel. So I have to be very, very specific and like perfect about my lines. And um, yeah, so here's the clean lines. You see how it's like... There's no mistakes, everything's all perfect, and not perfect, but I mean, it's not like choppy or rough or anything. This took a very, very long time. I mapped it out. Each one of these frames took me 20 minutes to finish. 
and there's about 50 frames in here, so yikes. <laughs> and that's the other thing too. If you want to be an animator, you have to be okay with putting in a lot of work for not a lot of um, product. Like, this took me a month, this is two seconds long. So, so then we'll just put the color back in there. And yeah, that was that Monica. So now this is where I'm going to show you, like, brushes or tools. Sorry, I've been watching Jeffree Star. I'll show you the brushes. <laughs> Um, so, I showed you before, this was, this is the rough. So, I'm gonna turn off rough mouths. I'm gonna turn off, actually no, I'm not gonna turn it off. I'm gonna drop the opacity. So to do that, you go over here, click on the folder itself, and then drop the opacity up here. That makes every mouth dropped in opacity as opposed to just one. And then rough two, I will also drop that. Bam. So then we'll make a new folder right here and we'll call it clean Monica. I'm not going to completely do her, but I just want to show you like basic. So the folder is set right now. So then what you have to do is hit um, new animation cell. So you see how that just popped in there? And you have to make sure that this little tiny red line in front of the one is clicked, otherwise you're not drawing in that frame. So if you see over here, this is my, I call it my workstation. I've organized it. You can move these anywhere you want and you can make them bigger or smaller depending on where you want them. I always put them in the corner so that I can watch YouTube videos while I work. It just creates a nice little space where I can, like, feel like I'm watching TV while I work. It's very nice. So let me put these back. Okay, so the color wheel is obvious. That's what it is. You just move that. You do whatever you want. And then for animating, I use the G pen. But there's a lot of... So this is the G pen. I have it on five right now. The G pen is, like, the cleanest brush for this. Um, there's a mapping pen. There's a whole bunch of pens right here that you can explore on your own. And then for coloring, I always use the fill-in mono pen marker. So let's say this is Monica's hair. We just color her in. So let's stick with the pen for now. Get rid of that. Then this is the eraser tool. Let me draw something first. Da -da 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 -da. Then you would erase accordingly. And then you can just hit delete if you want it to go away. And then this is my probably my favorite tool. So this is called the, the direct line tool, and I have it set on continuous curve. Watch this shit. This is how you make a really clean line. So you just go in and tap and tap and tap and tap, and you just follow along the line, and voila, you've traced over that line and made a really clean face. Um, this is the fill bucket. I don't have anything filled in right now. Oh, never mind. So yeah, you just touch that and it gets filled in. Wham, bam. This is how you move shit around. Oh, and then Command Z to undo. And then this is the magic lasso. You can just click that if you want easy access to something. And then if you ever need to, selection, deselect. I use that a lot. <laughs> and then this is the marquee or the lasso. You use this to drag specific things, and then you put it there, and deselect. And that's pretty much everything I use for animating. And then there's, you can fix the brush size over here. Let me put that back. <laughs> the opacity. So anti, anti-aliasing. So like, this is anti-alias. It's like, bam, blocky. And then the more you put it up, it gets like a little fuzzy. Um, it's best to have that in the middle because you don't want it when it's... Oh, I just got rid of that. I mean, that's okay. Let me... There we go. Um, when it's too anti-alias, um, the, the, the lines look like blocky and bad. So I think you should always use the second setting for this. So that way it's not too blocky. Yeah, so then you just, then I would just keep uh, tracing over it until it's ready. And then you would go underneath 
everything. So go like here, make a new folder, call it color one, make that new cell. And then let me open my reference of Monica's hair. Okay, so this is my file. I also recommend doing this, keeping like a file for all your col for all the colors of your character so that it's always consistent. So, oh, by the way, I'm using a Wacom Intuos tablet. Here's a picture of it right now. And to grab just her color hair, you just go in and hit the top button on your pen and then it grabs it for you. We are underneath all the layers. So we could just draw that in. That's her hair, wahaha. So the mistake is if this, if the color folder was on top of the roughs, you wouldn't be able to see her face. So you have to be careful of the order of all your folders. So that way everything looks very nice and clean and the way it's supposed to. And the last thing I want to show you guys is how I set up my space while I'm working. I have back pain, like really badly, so I finally figured out a way to sit without hurting my back, and I can get work done much quicker and much easier. So what I do is I set up two pillows against my bed, and I would sit there, and then I hold my laptop on my lap, and then I rest my tablet on a pillow here, keep the pen nearby, and always keep uh, some water with you, gotta stay hydrated. And yeah, I just think that having this soft, cushioned work area is a lot more comfortable and a lot more easier and calming to work in, especially you have, if you have back pain like me. So I just wanted to show you that because it revolutionized the way I work and it's my new favorite thing that I do. <laughs> So thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. I hope this was helpful. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for this and I've been animating for about three years and I'm nowhere near a professional, but I've got the basics down. Um, so I hope that this was able to help you. I really love when you guys ask me for art tips. So if there's anything else you wanna know, if you wanna, if you want me to do like a coloring tutorial or anything like that, please let me know and I'll happily do it for you. Um, and also, speaking of the Doki animation, I'm aiming to have this out sometime in the new year. Like, I'm really taking my time with this. I'm really proud of where it's going. And I just want to say thank you all again for being so patient with me as I figure my shit out. <laughs> so, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. And keep on animating. Bye.